Well, all right, here we go. I'm Joe Renton with my review of NWA Power, episode 25. And boom, Trevor Murdoch is being interviewed by Kyle Davis. And after the recent attacks by Chris Adonis and losing a National Heavyweight Championship, he wants another shot. He will agree to any stipulation. He is too damn stubborn to know when to stay down. But damn it, he is double tough. And that's the story they're telling. And then here's Nick Aldis. And he basically calls Murdoch out and says, go back and drink a beer, take a break, whatever it is you people do. Just runs him down. He says, you gotta look in the mirror to know who screwed up and why you're no longer champion. Um, he says, you're just not championship material, but if you stay away from my exhibition main event tonight, maybe down the road you'll get an opportunity. Well, what are you trying to say, Nick? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say I'll get a shot at the 10 pounds of gold? I need to know now because I want to get it, Adonis, and I really want to know the answer right now. But all this is like, you stay away and then we'll talk. Okay, good back and forth promo battle here. Nice stuff. Nice way to start. Um, but I did like the line where, you know, Nick always said, nobody backs me in the corner, you're all, I'm the puppet master, and you're all puppets, and all that stuff. Uh, okay, I love Joe Galley, and I love Tim Storm as a commentary duo. They gotta cut Velvet, and regardless of how I feel about Velvet and Tyrus, as far as, you know, people outside the ring, Velvet looks like she wants to be literally anywhere else, she doesn't sound interested at all, she adds nothing to commentary, and Tyrus is fucking wiped out. He should not be in the ring any goddamn more. Um, May Valentine's interview in Slice Boogie about Jack's name. He says, well, I took you out and I'll beat you up again. I'll face you off, uh, or face off against you in a match at some point. Why the hell not? And then we get Aaron Stevens and Kratos versus Sauronaro and a mystery partner that doesn't show up. It's apparently a former NWA champion. Oh no, who the hell could it be? So they basically beat the shit out of Sauronaro because the partner doesn't show up. Um, it's pretty obvious who the partner was. I think they kind of telegraphed this a bit, but it was some nice storytelling. So that guy Danny Deal shows up, and then he gets shit beat out of him by um, uh, J.R. Kratos. Not the podium, says Joe Galley, and Tim Storm says, okay, I've had enough. He gets in there, basically gets up on the apron, like, hey, just cover the guy. What the hell are you doing? And then we get a miscue. Stevens is like, Kratos, just beat him up. Just beat him up and cover him. What the hell are you doing? And miscommunication between the champions, and then Tim Storm punches Kratos. Roll up, one, two, three. Sells first victory in the NWA. Okay, so obviously they're going to get an NWA tag title shot at some point. If not on power, maybe when the next pay-per-view comes up. I don't know when the next pay-per-view is coming up because NWA back for the attack was just a month ago, but we'll see. Um, and I like the idea of Tim Storm and Sal teaming up, you know, the you know veteran and Sal, you know, being the guy that just got his first victory. I think it's going to be a nice little short story, and they'll likely win the tag titles. I don't think they're going to hold them very long, but it's going to be a nice way for Tim Storm to get back to wrestling like he has been for a number of years. And I love Tim Storm. Great natural baby face, great talker, and a really, really all-around good guy. And Velvet just did not add anything to this at all. Uh, Kyle Davis interviews Pope, Tyrus, and Austin Idol. And Pope and Tyrus just go back and forth. And Tyrus just, no, just this isn't working at all. Pope is very fired up and uh, recounts the history that they had and basically says, you need to go prove yourself. So then they suddenly have two guys in the ring. And it's Tyrus versus Matt Cross versus uh, Marsh Rocket. Okay, cool. And I like Matt Cross. Got to meet him at a couple indie shows. Really, really nice guy. Super talented. Got to see him face Ultimo Dragon about two years ago. Goddamn wild. Um, yeah, I felt bad for the other two because Tyrus just can't do anything. He just really can't. Um, Cross hits the shooting star press and then Tyrus hits him and then covers one, two, three. So he earns the TV title shot at some point down the road. Probably within the next few weeks, I imagine. Then when May Valentine interviews Adonis and Latimer, Adonis is like, well, Murdoch can face me, but he's not going to get a shot at my championship. And then Latimer just runs him down as well. Camille versus Genocide. Two big glasses colliding with each other. It wasn't bad. In fact, this probably was the best match of the night, in all honesty. As far as in-ring work, I thought they told a pretty good story. Camille facing off against somebody that was just as big as her. Lots of power moves. Genocide did hit a nice kick in the corner, hit a nice kick in the spotlight, losing her religion. Spear for two, Camille looked upset, and then second spear for three. And then here's Melina, and then she gets speared by Camille. And then Thunder Rosa's like, what the hell are you doing? Thunder Rosa is pretty much the only person they have, besides Camille, that's in the women's division, that's really adding anything. Um, the other ones, they got to build up a little bit more, so I can care about literally anybody except the two of them. Then uh, Nick Aldis versus Jordan Clearwater. Exhibition match. And suddenly Murdoch, uh, Adonis, and Latimer are brawling. Oh no, Murdoch showed up, so he's not going to get the shot that he wasn't going to get anyway. Three on one beatdown. Thanks for coming, Jordan Clearwater. Yeah, that's basically about it. I want to say right now at the end of this review that 
I hope that they pick things up. I get it. They've been off for a year, and hopefully they can pick things up with the weekly programming. Otherwise, I may just switch to just uh, reviewing the pay-per-views and not review NWA Power, because it's not that the show's bad, but there isn't much material for it. I appreciate the efforts of the talents, but there comes a point when you have to cut ties. I'm not going to cut ties yet, but I hope the weekly product gets better, or I may have to. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Redland. I'll see you soon.